Okay, welcome. Um, introduction to data analysis. This is your first step into the magical... It's pointing the right angle at the moment, so it's okay, thanks. Um, as part of the BSCIT, one of the things I suspect many of you thought you were going to do was not to do any programming, because that's why you want to do IT rather than computer science or something like that. What we're going to introduce you to in this module, and I talked to a few of you so far in the previous session, and the rest of you we'll talk to on Friday at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll show you how to get into this language, which was created around about 1976 or thereabouts, by a couple of guys, sort of graduates, who wanted to do something interesting in the field of analysing data. And they created the Statistical Analysis System, which has now become known as SAS. And a guy called Jim Goodnight was the guy who actually led it. He owns most of the company. It's still privately owned. It's one of the very biggest privately owned companies in the world. Uh, very, very profitable. It's the, one of the biggest companies that nobody's ever heard of, apparently. Apart from Fortune 500 companies and uh, FTSE 100 type companies. Big, big companies who want very, very heavyweight, very high quality um, analysis software. And they invest a phenomenal proportion of their revenue every year in R&D to developing the system, making it e easier to use, making it more powerful to do the sort of things that businesses want it to do. It's used in pharmaceuticals uh, companies as part of their drug testing processes to store and analyse the data that comes from drug trials. It's used by companies like Rolls-Royce or was used by companies like Rolls-Royce Aerospace as the end user language in the 1980s, 1990s, and I think it's probably still used there. <coughs> it's used by m almost all of the big financial services organizations, the big banks, the international banks, and so on. So it's a, a language which is incredibly widely used, and as we said earlier on this afternoon, and we'll say again uh, on Friday, if you become competent at it while you're here at the university, and get your base SAS certification, which we will pay the first test that you take uh, to get your certificate, um, then that will probably add something like 10 to 15% to your salary levels. It's widely de um, desirable. And a, a link in one of the job search, in, um, UK job search engines, you put the URL in and SAS, it'll tell you all of the jobs that you're likely to be qualified for, and you'll see just how high the, the salaries are for competent SAS programmers. So it's something that's really great, it's valuable to you guys, and it's the foundation of what you're going to be doing with the BSCIT, which is very much moving into an analytics uh, environment. So this year you do SAS, Introduction to uh, Data Analysis. Next year you'll be doing at least one module with Lu Lu, uh, again, the spring semester, where you do a lot more work with SAS, and then in the final year, when you come back after your placement, assuming you've done one, then you will have at least two modules where you'll probably want to use SAS or another uh, environment. And we've also, as well as being part of the SAS Academic uh, Alliance or SAS, Stu uh, SAS uh, Student Academy. Uh, we're also here a member of the IBM um, Academic Alliance as well, and so we've now got access to a huge range of <coughs> IBM's analytics tools as well, which you'll get new access to um, in your final year, if not before. So we're going to give you access to lots and lots of very interesting tools where you, that you can play and analyse the stuff called big data, the stuff that comes from open source, source data, and there's huge amounts of it. And you're going to be doing some searching for interesting sources of data out there somewhere. I'm not going to give you, uh, most and I are not going to give you data uh, in the usual sort of way. Here's a data set, go and analyse it. We're going to say, this is a challenge, we want you to find some data and then do something with it. And then that means you can choose whatever data you like, that it meets the criteria that we set you, and is of interest to you. Because if, if it's something interesting to me, and it might be location mm -hmm. services data, then you might not connect with it. But if it's 
something you found, well, it might be from the health environment or it might be location of all of the um, CCTV cameras around Derby City or where all the lampposts are in Derby, you can find that sort of data if that's of interest to you. Lots of things you can do. With SAS, you can use uh, map it, put it onto maps uh, using the latitude and longitude. You can do graphs, you can do charts, bar charts, you can do all sorts of amazing things to find the interesting questions and then the interesting answers. Now that's what we're going to be sort of setting out the stall for you to do over the next uh, 12 weeks. So this is, the f some of you have already seen this link and started using that. Um, <clears throat> here is the, in this, which is in study materials, you'll see how to download a way of using SAS on your home PC, as long as it's a Windows 7, 8 or 10 machine running in 64-bit mode. If it isn't 64-bit mode, it won't work. This system will also run on MacBooks, it'll run on Linux PCs, uh, as well as Windows PCs, as long as they're all 64-bit machines. So, easy to run at home, easy to use it on the labs, the, the specialist labs, uh, where we've got SAS in all of the labs, uh, the specialist labs. <coughs> it doesn't run, it's not available on any of the non-specialist uh, lab PCs. So you probably want to get that set up. Uh, <coughs> so there's that. Um, let's nip across the module information. You've seen that with workshop groups. Um, let's just switch it into your mode. One of the things that we are learning here at the university, and a lot of people outside the university are kind of interested uh, on what we're doing, is in the BSCIT, we do not do the standard thing of say, lecture by lecture, taking you through how to do the language. Our time and your time here in the labs, here in the uh, seminar, is far too valuable to waste time spending teaching you boringly all the parts of the language. There's 20 chapters available on our S drive, which you can access through the um, PCs in the specialist labs. There's a whole folder of about 1.2 gigabytes worth of information all about the, the formal SAS um, language. 20 chapters that you are going to be going through over the next four or five weeks but in the workshops down in the labs and at home. And you will be, there are four computer based tests that you can take as many times as you like to get your score up to as high as you can get. The idea is that you should, if you go through the 20 chapters carefully and do all of the exercises, um, most of them will be doing that in about a week's time, I think it is. I did it a couple of years ago. And 35, the 25 chapters is about 35 hours worth of work. And you'll be going through that, and the first CBT relates to chapters 1 to 5. And when you finish chapters 1 to 5 and done all the exercises, you should be able to pass the, um, the CBT and get 10 out of 10 without even thinking. And then the rest of the, the other three uh, CBTs will test other sections. But what we're doing is allowing you to learn by research and by doing. And this kind of mirrors what's actually happening in the real world if we look at our computer, si your computer science colleagues when they go out onto their placement year in a year's time and they're using programming languages of various sorts, you will, they will find there is nobody actually in that company, especially if they're small companies, who has the time to teach them the new language that they suddenly find they're using. Okay, you will all have to teach yourself how to use programming languages. Huge amounts of resources out there in, on the internet, YouTube videos, uh, all of the various technical blogs and so on. And so what we're doing here is helping you from day one almost learn how you will be working when you're out on your placement or in your jobs. And many companies who do use SAS, yes they do use some of the formal 
training courses that SAS put on, they put on a huge number. But they are very, very expensive. So you probably will only get onto one or two of the most critical courses, and you will have to then use the manuals. And we have, again on the S Drive, 120 of the most important manuals that SAS have produced. That's worth probably 6,000 quid's worth of manuals on there, six or 7,000 quid's worth. That you have, you can just download and copy the whole of the folder onto your PC for use at home. And that's 6,000 quid's worth of manuals um, <clears throat> which you would, most companies would never afford. So, the obvious inference is download them and they're going to be useful for you for life. Well, until SAS have changed things so fundamentally they'll become out of date, but they don't change that fast. You may not pick up all the latest updates uh, for the new bit goodies, but no, that's not so bad. You understand how to use the basics. If you want to find out what the module's about, this is the official uh, module description there. And then there's a little thing here I'm going to be going through in a few minutes about how you can best use your time to really do well uh, in this module. I'll be taking you through also some aspects of the assessment, how the assignments are going to be structured, and how, what proportion, what the weighting is for each of the bits um, of the fourth, four parts uh, that you're going to need to score well in uh, to do well. This is one place where this is the place where you'll find last year's um, videos, uh, and I'll be putting these next this year's ones into a similar sort of place. So I'll put the link up as soon as I've got one there. Today is what processed. This video here is by a guy called Roberto Zicari, um, who is German, and he runs a website odbms.org. And I've contributed one or two articles there. And, uh, but this is a link I'd like you to watch. It gives you a, big, a very good idea about what analytics is about. <coughs> um, so use as much of those resources as you can, because they'll lead you some interesting things. Now, let's just have a look. At getting a 2 1. 60% or better is a 2 1. And that's what we want all of you to aim for at least. Not too difficult. I want to cover those various items about what you need to know, how much time. These are actually quite important. You've got to be realistic about yourself. So last term we talked about understanding yourself in the skills side of intro to science. And I want you to think about those questions. Whether it's about your learning style, about when you work best. Use all of that that you got from last term to kind of work out how to structure your time that you've got each week during the term. Yeah, well, I'll be doing that in a minute. Help you to be familiar with what the, the assessments are. A lot of the time, we're going to be available to you downstairs in the labs to help you with what we call formative assessment. That's, you've got a problem, or you've done some work, you want to know how well you're doing. The sort of stuff I did each week in those six workshops in ICS where I came around and talked to you individually about your work as you develop those articles. This is how you know where you've got to and what you need to do better, or how to do better, uh, how to extend yourself above the 60%. Those of you who want to get first, that's 70% and above, will be giving you indications of what you need to do to get up there. And it's part of the reason why all of the marking on this module will only be 95, 85, 75, 65, 45, 55, 37 and 20. You will not get in any particular part of a component 67. You will get 65, 55 or 75. 
The weightings between the various components give a bit of a spread, but the major reason for doing that is that it helps you to think about the real question. Because if I'm marking every single possible number, 71, 72, 72, 74, and so on, and you've got 78, the first question you all ask is, what do I need to do to get 81%? Wrong answer. Wrong question. It's 65, 2, 1, what do I need to do to get the next level above that? The 70 to 80, 79% band, or 75. And so that's why I work in those, that way. It helps you to ask yourself the right question rather than the wrong one. How do I get two more marks? I don't know. I can tell you about 10 marks, yeah. And then the summative ones, these are the ones that actually score for your, your actual uh, grade on your module. And there are effectively four components of that, which we'll look at in a little while. Now, those of you who really went to every single one of those workshops last term on ICS and listened to what I said and did what I said and actually got your article into the, the template properly and used the template properly, got, saw the benefit of that formative assessment, didn't you? You all saw how if I talked to you or you talked to me, you did better. Those who didn't attend, and there were lots of them, and those who didn't listen to what I say or didn't do, do what I said, lost 20 points straight off because it wasn't formatted correctly, didn't use the template properly, and they didn't develop their argument or their analysis adequately. And that, you know, you've lost the opportunity if you don't have that formative. So formative is there to help you increase your grade significantly. My research that I've been doing for the last three years shows that this bit here can be worth up to 20% on your grade. Or to put it the other way around, if you don't give yourself the opportunity of that, you are probably throwing away 20% of your grade at least. That's a lot of marks, isn't it, overall? And this last year, I noticed at the graduation ceremony on Friday for <coughs> Engineering Technology, the BSC IT, people who graduated on uh, last Friday, who finished their work May last year, they have the highest proportion of first class honours of almost, well, of any um, degree course in the whole of engineering and technology and the business school. It was very close to 50% of the graduates had got firsts. That's because we are working very, very heavily on that area. So attend all of the workshops and all of the seminars in here, week by week, and that is going to happen for you. If you don't, like last year with this module, there were four or five people who didn't listen to instructions, who didn't engage properly, and they didn't even pass, let alone get plus 20%. So what's called learning analytics, i.e. the sort of thing, techniques we're talking about in terms of analysing data in this module and other modules through the next two years, tells me the importance of that. And the importance of this research-based learning approach that we're using starting now. It has an incredible effect on the way that you get sucked into the subject and then do very, very well. Basically, you've got something like 40 hours, sorry, yeah, 48 hours worth of contact time. So that's four hours a week. You've got contact with me and my colleague over there, Mohsen Farid, who will be shadowing me and working with me and taking some of the classes. And then you've got this 152 hours working by yourselves. Now the first 
four or f uh, first six weeks probably of workshops down in the labs, you're going to be doing so that's six times two, 12 hours out, out of that, plus another probably 25, 30 hours out of that is you learning SAS using the 20 chapters. But we expect you to put about 30 to 13 hours a week into this module, both here on campus and elsewhere. And elsewhere. If you put that sort of hours in, you're going to do very, very well. If you don't schedule yourself properly, then you know, things are going to build up awful fast. But the nice thing for you is, everything will have been marked by the end of term. Again, provided you attend all the sessions. Much of, almost all this, as, as, um, the non-computer-based testing, the assessment presentations and so on, will be done in here or in our office during term time. Yeah, pens and papers, I see quite a few pens and papers, so obviously most of you are not millennials um, because millennials don't have pens on them at all, so well done. Paper is important. Um, it's interesting, there's a research published not that long ago, about six months ago, which compared how people learned in lectures and seminars, whether they wrote, hand wrote on paper um, their notes, or whether they typed them into a laptop or into a tablet or something. What was interesting was that those who used pen and paper didn't necessarily capture quite all of the key points, but they understood the subject very, very well. Whereas those who typed their notes captured most of the points, but had very little clue about what it all meant. Reasoning, don't know, but it's interesting. And that actually identifies something rather interesting about analytics. Is it may not tell us exactly why things happen, but it tells us an awful lot about what is happening. We'll talk a bit about some of the implications of this over the next few weeks, because there are some very interesting implications, and I should be talking actually to various conferences over the next six months. Uh, business conferences in the fields of... Um, telecoms, retail, manufacturing, which incorporates some of these ideas, and I'll be posting those um, presentations and videos of most of the presentations where you guys can actually get to see what I'm actually saying, um, and the sort of governance questions that are raised by analytics. <coughs> oh yes, backup. How many of you use um, Google or Microsoft SkyDrives and so on? How many of you just store it on your laptop at home? Most of you have it on a memory stick, hard drive, port hard drive. How many of you have got it stored somewhere else other than on your hard drive or on your PC? Just one or two of you is SkyDrive. Yeah. So. Always keep backups, folks. And it's probably worthwhile while we're on that topic to keep multiple backups, staged backups. <coughs> and one of the things I do for important documents is that every hour on the hour, I just save it as a new file name. And I put at the end of the file name the year, 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 month, month, day, day, and then A, B, C, D, E, F, and so on. Change the ABC every hour with a file save as, and that gives me a new copy every hour. So even if it blue, blue screens on us, as Microsoft does sometimes, I've only got a maximum of one hour's worth of work to recreate. And at the end of the day, again, increment the alphabetic alpha to the next highest, save as, and then store it on there, on your memory stick or on your PC, and in Dropbox or SkyDrive, Google Drive, whatever. So you've got multiple copies. Use your U Drive, for example, if you're internet connected. That's the U drive that you, most of you know your U drive, don't you? Anybody not know the U drive? Okay, use it. Store backups every day.
Make sure you do lots of exercises. The exercises in the SAS 20 chapters are absolutely vital. You must do all of those because otherwise you won't be able to get 40% plus in those computer-based tests. During part of the work, when you're doing your individual presentations, you will also be asked to provide one or two little exercises based on your research that the rest of the class might find useful. Keep chatting, because this is probably the first time, isn't it, just about, um, well, this semester, that you've really together as the BSCIT group. Or, or did you have a module like that last term? Yeah, you do. So, so you know each other well. Okay. We encourage you to share your ideas. It is only in the assessments that it must be your own work unless we tell you otherwise. But all the rest of the time, share ideas, because that multiplies you know, the knowledge of this group. We call this grumpy advice. That's actually not my term, it's Richard Hill, Hill's terms, because uh, he wrote this originally. Um, but we, we know these things. Next week comes much, much quicker than you thought, obviously. We all know that. Do that, please. The number of people who last term lost large amounts of the presentation part of the assessment for the article because they didn't read the instructions, guys. I was horrified about week five in one of the sessions to discover that three or four people who were still beginning to work on their assignment, hadn't actually read the assignment specification. How on earth can you possibly do a good assignment if you haven't read the specification? It's critical. Don't do that. There are very few reasons for getting extensions any longer. Unless you've got a support plan and We'll know who's got that, and you know who's got one, and you know what you're entitled to for that. Always, if anything is getting difficult, come and talk to me or mostly. The earlier we know that you've got a problem, the more that we can do to protect your options and sort out, help you sort out your problems. If you come to us after a due date, when you haven't submitted anything, that becomes a problem which we cannot help you to solve. So early notice of issues and problems is better than not. And yeah, we want you, this is the title of this set of slides, we want you to do well. We want you to do over 60%. Any questions on that bit, folks? Or is it all blindingly obvious? Okay, in which case, why did you not do it last term? That's my background. That, you all know where to find me, folks. Um, if you want to make, have a proper meeting, you can do one or two things. Either come up and see if I'm in. If I'm in and the door's open and I'm free, I will normally say yes. I might tell you to sit down or ask you to sit down for a couple of minutes while I finish something off, but often available. If you want a longer session, email me and we can all, with a time and we can organise a, a particular meeting. <coughs> this is what we're going to be looking at over the next 12 weeks. Why it's so important, what's happening in the big wide world about big data, the fact it's a big buzzword that is well known in industry, not so well known in schools yet. But there's lots of magical things going on. The conference that I go to, and that uh, most of them may have been to, 
help us to understand you know, the big opportunities there, what businesses are trying to do, and are they being successful, and what sort of things work and don't work. And we'll be trying to look at sort of fairly large amounts of data, more than you would use in, say, Excel. And yeah, these are the tools we're using. SAS is a really serious heavyweight tool that does some amazing things. But there's no point in doing the most brilliant technical things if you can't communicate those ideas, those insights. So that's why at no stage in a formal marking sense do you demonstrate the details of your software. If you look at some of the other, your, what some of your other colleagues are doing, I think it's this term with programming one, or that might have been the last term, I forget which, on programming two. Part of the assessment, you submit all of your code and the lecturer then eyeballs the code, code inspection. None of that. We do the assessment through the, your communication skills. And if you look downstairs by, I think it's, I think we've got a poster of it um, down by the entrance to E514, and certainly it's on the big TV screen uh, by the entrance to the technician's office. You'll see an eSkills UK and SAS infographic poster which has two, bra two half brains on it. Have you noticed that one? With technical skills above the left hand side and soft skills above the right hand side. Now we are going to work this module on the basis that your use of the 20 chapters and all the exercises in that and the CBT tests help you to develop your technical skills. Much of what we're doing is on the right hand side, the soft skills as we call them, the skills to do with communication, things like creativity, problem identification, problem um, creation, solution creation collaboration, working together, creativity, having that flash of genius that pulls stuff together, and all of you are capable of doing that. And then um, communication skills and storytelling. One of the problems that many, many business leaders keep talking to me about when I'm out in conferences, these IT guys, and many of our technical, non-IT, but tech, sort of business technical, they can talk in their own geek language, their own lingo, their own um, sort of language that we all develop in our specialities. But they can't communicate to other people. They can't put the ideas together in a way that sells, in a very, very compelling fashion, the message that they come up with. So storytelling is something that they look on us as, just teaching storytelling? Wow, we need that. And so we're going to be developing this storytelling capability over the next few weeks with you. And then each semester uh, we'll be developing that more and more. We give you the basics and then go explore, folks. Go through the manuals, those 120 manuals, look at them carefully and look at which ones might be relevant to the SAS Studio environment or the PC 9.3 SAS. Find interesting things. Really interesting things. Because there's lots out there. Whether it's the sources of data or whether it's the magical things you can do with some of the clever bits of SAS. Working together. This is a collaboration aspect. Talking, communicating, sharing research. A lot of it, we'll be doing a lot of presentations um, as well through here. You'll be doing two sets of presentations. So, and it also simulates what happens in the outside world. 
Now, you, in the outside world, you do work together in teams. And each team wants to succeed. And sometimes you find a member of the team is not really quite as strong as you would like them to be. Now, there's one of two responses. Kind of shoot them, shuffle them off out of the way into the corner, and get on and do all the work yourselves. That's one solution. It's not terribly effective. The better solution is for those of you who are at least competent, if not good, or even better, help to bring the weaker members of the teams up to the right level. Kind of team building. So again, there's lots of opportunity in this module and the other modules you're doing this semester to be able to do some of this. Help doing the team building, helping the weaker ones, showing them how to do things if necessary, um, how to find the right answers, how to develop. What might spoil it? What things do you think might make this not succeed? What sort of behaviour patterns won't be helpful? Something like not turning up. Not turning up? Yep. Especially if it's the week that you're supposed to be giving one of your presentations. Which, at the beginning, you're being, going to do in pairs. What else might cause it not to work very well? Not being organised. <clears throat> not being organised, yeah, that's right. Not being inquisitive. Another one. Those are the computer based tests which prove that you've learned all the lessons in the 20 chapters. This is a little research-based uh, presentation that you will each give, or in pairs, about things you found out about different aspects of SAS. So we'll set up those next week, and there'll be, I think it's five topics from memory, and you in, you'll sort yourselves out into pairs, and then you will choose one of the topics that you will research. You'll find some SAS code that does it, perhaps, and then you'll tell us in about five minutes what's interesting about that bit of SAS. And you will also have a little exercise that you will give to the student and your other colleagues so that they can explore the sort of things you've worked on. And then you'll find some data, you'll write a little SAS um, thing, product, and then that will be a four minute presentation, maybe a couple of screenshots, and we'll again, both of these will be assessed in here and you will give a presentation, there will be a marking sheet and you'll all uh, mark each other as you do the presentations, what went well, things that could be done better, and uh, then we'll use that to provide your grades. Most and I will make sure that you're graded fairly, so we have an oversight of the whole lot, we will mark it individually as well, each of you, so we'll then be able to, you'll then be able to see at the end how most and I have marked it, compared with how the rest of you have marked it. So you'll be able to begin to develop an idea of how to assess your own work and other people's work, which is another incredibly valuable skill to learn <coughs> for when you go out into the big wide world. And there's one little extra bit. <coughs> Participation here. So that's going to be based partly on your attendance record and partly on other things that you're contributing to what we're doing. Those CBTs, presentation to class, and creation and presentation of your analysis system. So 10%, 40%, 20%, 30%. So those are the weightings for those four elements. But you need to pass each one of them, which means you've got to get 40% of, of that, 40% of that, 40% of that, and 40% of that, otherwise you fail. If you get 60% for each of those three and don't do that one, or that one, or that one, or that one, sorry, you failed. You have to pass all four elements. That was why actually six people last year failed the module. 
because they forgot to do one of the elements or couldn't be bothered. Everybody else got 50% or better from memory. Most of them were 60%. You've got to do all four elements and get 40% or better. Talked about that. Yes, those are a couple of useful links. itjobswatch.co.uk. Go in there and search for jobs with SAS, and you will be amazed at the salary increment or analytics capability compared to ordinary IT graduates. And I mentioned last term Sophia, didn't I? How many of you remember that I talked about Sophia in week 12? Anybody not remember it? I don't remember. Go and look at it. It's valuable to tell you uh, the sort of skill levels that you need. Now, one of the things is it has the provide a framework of skills that are needed in the IT industry in about six different set categories across six or seven um, competency levels. From very, very basic, I do exactly what I'm told and I need to be scheduled and managed ever so carefully, level one, right through to level seven setting strategy. And as you go through this degree course, by the time you get to the final year, some elements of what you're doing could well be at Sophia level six, level seven. As though you were an IT director, a chief information officer. Some of the assignments in the final year are aimed at getting you to that level. So these are sort of things, so we won't do that just for a moment, but I want you to do that when you get home. So I want to now just take you briefly through the assessments themselves. This is where you can find the four computer-based tests here. Tells you which chapters they relate to, chapters one to five, six to eight, chapter nine, and then the rest, how to build reports and so on. So that's where you'll find that one, or that set. And I'll take you through this a little bit first. Just a brief observation about the learning outcomes which come from the module uh, specifications. You will, at the end of this module, provided you engage, know you will be able to understand and apply basic statistical and data analysis techniques, because SAS embedded, embeds all of that lot. Even the stuff you started today, using the UCLA um, tutorial materials, started you straight in with proc, proc core for correlation, proc means, the basic statistics uh, data, and so on. So at the beginning to get you there. You will be able to effectively design and implement simple systems for performing basic data analysis and reporting, and you will have seen some of those already from UCLA uh, tutorials. But you're gonna develop that a long way from where you are today. And then you can use those data analysis tools and your soft skills to communicate results effectively to other people. Because without that communication, there's no point in doing any of the analysis. Because you will almost always be doing the analysis for somebody else. You will be the analytics experts to help business people make their decisions. And if you can't do that communication, there's no point in doing that job. <clears throat> One of the things that business people complain about year after year, whether it's in the UK or anywhere around the world, is that ma many, many, many graduates from every level of university, whether it's Oxbridge, all the way down, past us to the very bottom universities, 
Most universities are failing business because their graduates cannot communicate effectively. And our objective is that all of you, when you finish here in three, three and a half years' time or thereabouts, will be ace at communication. So this document, at the top of the list, is a formal specification of the various components of the portfolio that you're going to be putting together and that we build up the marks together to be so that you get the really great results that you want. Tells you a little bit about what the different chapters are in those three CBT, four CBTs. In class presentation. And we'll have set up a place where you can submit your uh, presentations and so on um, at an appropriate point. But you'll see the little application you're going to do, i.e. a bit of SAS coding, this is how you're going to do it. You do the work, you, you collect some data from somewhere to our specification, you do some interesting analysis, and most of you will not do the same stuff because the data is different, the questions are different, the stakeholders who might be involved, who might find it interesting, are going to be different. So you'll all be doing different things. And then you have a four minute video, screencast, whatever. And then you come to us, probably during the second week of term, I think, uh, second week of exams, we begin the second of May, uh, one by one, and you will bring your screencast or MP MP4 or video or whatever um, to show me and then we will show you the uh, marking screen in a minute. So when we do that little presentation halfway through term, which is the second chunk. This is what we'll be having. There'll be a big stack of those forms for all of you so you can assess each other and give what you really liked about it and what could be improved. You won't be giving a mark there, I will be. So this is the first stage, so you're beginning to get a feel for how to assess, identify good points and things that need or could be improved. demo system. Things that you've got to build into your little system. Extra things that make it really fun. Now that one is not difficult, but it's just increased levels of complexity and make an interactive dashboard. Um, But you must have two separate sources of data, at least a couple of thousand rows of data in each of the two data sets which have something in common so you can join them together. Um, you will use base SAS. This means you will predefine the sort of analysis and reporting. This means you will have mechanisms for cleaning up the data, doing something to it, and then put it into a database, a final database, which is where you um, work from. So these are two sources which might be have problems with the data. You need to clean it up. And the ETL process here is basically extracting from the source areas, putting it into a, a compatible form in SAS, pouring it in the SAS, but in the process making sure you've got rid of the rubbish. Because there's always going to be rubbish in that data wherever you get it from. <clears throat> and then extra points for things like visualization graphics and this one which is quite a challenging area is making it dynamic so you can actually pose questions on the fly in the demonstration.
In class presentation, this is how I'm going to be marking it. These are three areas, ability to communicate technical knowledge, <coughs> use of teaching facilities to support learning. So this is giving examples of code, etc., and actually being able to do the job of presenting, presenting. And then this is how well you answer questions after you've given your presentation. And your demo system, these two areas. Most of you should easily achieve that column of 65. There's no specifically good reason why anybody who's done the 20 chapters gets there. Probably you won't even get there. You should be getting there. That's your target. Start at that level. Use these matrix, this matrix, the rubric matrix, to help you choose how to do the task. It's part of self-assessment, partly also to help you drive your work to the highest possible level. Just like we use in ICS, using that 95% band in the uh, content, if you remember last semester, to choose the right topic that gave you the opportunity to do really, really well. There's no point in choosing something sort of down here as your target and then failing to meet it because then you'll end up down here. But if you aim to get up here and then and miss it a little bit, you'll get there or there. Use the rubrics, the marking schemes, to guide the way you choose the problems you're addressing and the way that you solve it and present it. These help you to drive up to that end. And yeah, we'll be able to, in many areas, help you against these week by week particularly in this one, to get your systems up there. So if you can start working on this one by around about week six or so, that's going to give you more time to develop nice little applications, more time to find really great data. Okay, folks, any questions about the way the model is going to be run or about the assessments at this stage? All happy? Brilliant. Okay, thanks, folks.